Hello, guys. I know this is the lecture we were supposed to be doing on Friday. So sorry about that. We've had a very strange um, almost week, I guess. Um, because today is technically a virtual day, I figured I would just go ahead and record this, um, pre-record it so that you guys can watch it on your own time. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. We're talking about dirt. I can't think of a more exciting topic for this virtual day. Um, so we're going to talk about soil formation and erosion and then soil composition here in a second. I will also say that this particular portion of the slideshow has two different videos in it. One about soil formation and then one about how water moves through soil. So what I've done is I've actually copied the links to both of those videos in today's Schoology folder so that you can watch those on your own time or go through them as you go through the slideshow, whatever you prefer. Um, in that regard. So soil formation and erosion. Um, we probably already know that soil soil comes from weathered mineral content. And so that can mean anything from um, plants that break down and turn into soil or rocks, especially that break down and turn into soil. Um, it's constantly changing all the time, um, which makes sense because new things are always breaking down and turning into soil. Um, it can take thousand, or it can take eight, one thousand years to form one inch of topsoil, um, which is part of the reason why things like tilling and farming can be so detrimental because it takes so long to recover that layer of topsoil that people keep destroying. Um, repeated cycles of weathering, erosion, deposition, growth, and decay generate soils on bare rock. So even when it's just rock, um, soil will eventually form through those repeating cycles. And as we probably already know, living organisms are critical to soil formation. So things like fungi, bacteria, and soil invertebrates. Soil, soil invertebrates are going to be things like earthworms, um, roly-polies, like microscopic bugs and bacteria, things like that. Um, they're really important. And what they do is they move that organic material down through the soil profile. So organic material doesn't just sit on the very top of the soil. It gets moved throughout the soil even deeper um, because of these living organisms. And this aerates the soil, just meaning that it provides air. It puts more air into the soil so that oxygen can get further down into it. And it provides drainage channels so that when it rains, the soil or the, the water doesn't just sit on top of the soil. So this is one of those videos. Like I said, I've linked it in the um, Schoology folder for today. So if you want to pause this right now, go watch the video either in the um, PowerPoint or through the link in Schoology, you can do that and then come back. It's up to you. Um, primary succession, I can't remember if we've talked about this yet or not. Um, I feel like we have, but I might just be crazy. I'm not sure. Um, this is how soil is formed in general. So prime, yeah, I think we have talked about this. Primary succession is just when there's no soil, it's just rock. And then over time, soil forms. Um, the younger the soil is, the fewer layers it will have. Sorry, you guys met Millie last week on the um, during our meeting, and she is needing attention right now. Um, so the younger the soil is, the fewer layers it will have. Ancient soils are going to have multiple horizons, and those horizons are just the different layers. Um, they have acronyms for this. Um, in this case, they're just labeled by the first letter of the word. You've got organic, topsoil, zone of leaching, subsoil, partially altered parent material, and regolith which is, it's rock. Regolith is just like the original rock. Mildred, go away. Um, so generally the sequence is going to be from bottom to top, um, R-C-A-O-B-E. If you want to come up with a fun little way to remember that for yourself, go for it. I would love to hear them. Soil composition and properties. Um, soil is going to be just general soil that you find outside. It's going to be a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. And different particle sizes create different soil properties. Um, this is something that I find even more interesting now because when I first started teaching, I hadn't started really getting into house plants or anything like that yet. But now that I have, um, I know a little bit more about this because the mixture of soil that you use for your house plants can be really important for keeping them happy too. Um, so porosity, um, that's just going to be the total volume of pore space. So pure clay has the highest. And then permeability, um, permeability is the connected pore spaces. So this is how water can flow throughout it. So sand would have the highest 
because sand can move. You can see in our chart right here, we've got one meter, three feet, and that's how long it takes for the water to move through these different compounds. So it only takes about two minutes for water to move through three feet of gravel, two hours to move through three feet of sand, 200 days to move through three feet of silt. Oops. And then, um, no. And then 200 years for water to move through three feet of clay. So that's, super, why do I keep doing this? So that's super slow. What is this circle? Sorry. Um, and then water holding capacity is again, it's just how much water um, that particular substance can hold, which ties in pretty closely to the permeability and porosity. This is that second video, water movement in soil. So if you want to take a minute again to go watch this through the link in Schoology or the link in the slideshow, feel free to do that. <clears throat> so soil texture and soil chemistry. Um, soil texture, you've got things like that are qualitative observations. I don't know if we've talked about this or if this is just something you might already know from other courses, but qualitative data is going to be things that you can um, describe that you see like this dirt is brown or this rock is gray. That's qualitative information. You can feel the soil and say, well, this, this soil feels sandy. That's qualitative. But quantitative is gonna involve a quantity. So quantitative tests are gonna be something that involves pretty specific um, numerical information about the soil. So <clears throat> the percent comp composition of each particle size on the soil triangle is gonna be what tells us what type of soil it is. And so you got your soil composition um, triangle over here, which is a lot more complicated than what you guys probably need to know. But it's broken down into three categories with um, clay, sand, and silt. And then all of these guys in the middle are just combinations of those three things. Um, and that percentage on that chart is going to influence the drainage, irrigation needs, the hardness of the so soil, um, surface materials for building, things like that. Um, you've also got soil chemistry. So this is a little bit more specific and precise. Um, you've got the soil's pH, which influences what nutrients are available um, and can definitely influence what plants can grow there. Some plants are very sensitive to different pHs in the soil. The quantity of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And the soil chemistry is also going to heavily influence crop yields, um, how quickly pipes corrode or break down or rust or however you want to refer to it, and structures, so all of those sorts of things. But that is where we're going to cut it off for this one. I know it's really brief, um, but that's where we're stopping for now. Hopefully you've watched those two videos. Um, also for today, you guys have um, a checkpoint question that you're going to do. It is not necessarily on the topics that we're covering right now. It's more of just like a sort of science slash math slash graphing checkpoint to kind of see where we're at. And um, I don't know, just kind of prepare you guys for the AP exam a little bit further. So if you have any questions, as always, just shoot me an email. Um, I hope that you're all doing very well, and I will see you guys tomorrow, hopefully. How do I stop?